Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, my lecture input uh, for today is on developing design concept or ideas. So this is just like a short, I try to keep it to half an hour like that. A short lecture to explain to you on uh, my take on what is concept, design concept and ideas and how you can uh, generate that design language for each of you. Yeah. Okay, in this lecture, I will explain on uh, what is concept, finding an inspiration or idea, developing a design concept uh, when concept meets brief, when concept uh, meet context, um, but not really so much, uh, but generally an idea of how to develop a design concept. And then what uh, is a strong concept? Okay. And then architects and their design concept principles. Uh, as well as uh, explaining on developing your own design language keywords. Okay. We will uh, look at a lot of architects lah, uh, and precedents in terms of our uh, how they we can de develop the concept principles. Uh, if ada kawan yang tengah tunggu kat waiting room ke, saya tak perasan, uh, just inform me. Eh. Okay. okay, so what is a concept? So what is a design concept? Um, I think uh, by now in their third, the third semester of design, doing design studio, inshallah you have start to gauge an idea and right? what is a concept? Okay, uh, in simple words, uh, a concept is an idea an inspiration that comes to mind upon solving totally of a problem that you need to be solved. A thought or a notion, a representation of your mind, a solution, solution to an issue. It's the driving force of any project and identity of the work. An artistic inspiration brought to sight by the, the, by the designer. It was not there in the beginning. Okay. So an artistic inspiration brought to sight by the designer, it was not there in the beginning. So I think that's an important thing to remember because uh, that is the role of the architect, that is the role of the designer. When you have a site, people will come to the architect to get an artistic inspiration. For example, you have a concept, um, you have a site, lah, nah, an empty site, uh, near, for example, near the river, in a campus kind for, for this semester. Eh? So you have a site. So you have this long list of brief. Uh, you have your program or other macam -macam issue or the issue of pedestrian, um, what was the program previously, macam mana like handle sustainability. But those are not artistic inspiration. Those are brief. Artistic inspiration, ni, for example, you are interested in the idea of the folding paper. Hmm. That is something that the designer bringing to site. So the, the idea of the, the concept is very strong, the idea of the folded paper um, that uh, lepas tu bila you ada this concept ni, that it will, will be developed into throughout the scale of the building. Daripada form, daripada luar, to the interior uh, spaces. So that uh, artistic inspiration too is what um, is what con is being contributed by the uh, architect lah, by the designer. So the the the, the form will, the concept will change uh, slightly bila you berjumpa dengan contact, berjumpa dengan brief, uh, berjumpa dengan client, it will uh, shift. Uh, dia akan morphology lah, dia akan change, 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 change. Tapi the idea to is uh, at the back of it to is still the same. It is still for the that the example that I'm giving here is a uh, folded paper tu kan. Uh, so you can still see it there. So that is be the role of the architect, the concept lah. So what is the form of the concept? Uh, here you can see uh, the idea uh, in the form of theory, the notion and opinion, abstraction, the philosophy of the design, the belief, inspiration and intention. 
attention of what you want to do in plan, impression, and image view or hypothesis. Okay. Okay, an example, uh, Frank Gehry, the conceptual sketch um, for Center for Visual Arts, Toledo Highway. So, example of the sum of sketches by Kenya. Masiniaga, bangunan Masiniaga. Okay, and then in diagram form, the concept uh, by another, another project by Kenya. Concept diagram to show the continuous green screen and atrium. So how he come upon. So I see some use. Uh, it starts with sketches and then move on to more complex drawing type like diagram. Then. Okay, finding an inspiration or idea. How do you uh, develop your concept? So where do concept come from? Some sources that you can. Uh, used to, to gain some uh, design concepts, uh, Quran, uh, very important uh, source of direction uh, for a Muslim architect. And then uh, personal architectural preferences uh, to, to experience and uh, uh, background, childhood memory of a place, program, functional requirements, uh, and then place, culture, society, Technology, something, a type of tech that you are interested in, you want to explore. The materials, methods, movements, uh, movements of the site, for the people, uh, movement in general. So let's say the dynamic, right? Uh, the movements, uh, people's usage of space, space, emotions, uh, precedence research. So all those uh, sources, good, very good resources of where you can develop your concept, you can, you can find your concept. Okay, inspiration or concept may also come from the process of in-depth site analysis, collecting data over time of people's usage and need of the site, solving an issue on hand, reading and research, a thorough precedent study, Sketching exercise, okay. uh, folding paper, creating art, viewing art, observing built environment, observing furniture design, urban furniture, so art uh, and how people interact with this urban in, urban furniture. Lah. Okay. Usually, uh, I find that um, students tend to leave it to the last minute. Okay. So, <laughs> okay, students tend to uh, leave things to the last minute. Yes, it's about maybe night before, before you need to show your concept too. You just uh, find something on the top of your head, which is is, is not what uh, meant to you meant the process is not meant to be like that lah. So, about uh, what I find that. Uh, it is a rigorous process. It is a process. It's an action. Uh, trying to finding the finding the finding concept to is an action. It's like reading uh, all the verbs kind, reading, sketching, analyzing. So you need to do things by hand. So it usually take time. Take time nak sampai ke tahap yang you get a good concept to. So that's why hard work is part of the key of being a good architect. Be rigid, be rigorous, kan? Ah, uh, it's part of your characteristic that you need to train on your, into yourself. Um, you don't, you don't see, you don't, you are not scared of hard work. Ah, uh, kan? By now you have hamka, you not, you shouldn't be scared of hard work. But it is all stepping stones to getting ah uh, to, because you are beginning to appreciate ah uh, design, kan? So you, you see that as stepping stones to getting to the end result, to the concept, to that, the good concept that you want. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, the, the process to not just one, so you, can, uh, you will use multiple of these uh, in that set analysis, but to combine with uh, brainstorming again. then you read and you research and you do precedent study and then you sketch uh, you do sketch, 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 sketch uh, then you boleh go into something a bit more physical lah. you try play with uh, 3D ke 
uh, paper, something like that. So kalau saya macam saya start one thing that I do usually, tapi selepas after I read, uh, I sketch tapi saya tak dapat juga, it's time, sometimes uh, what I do is to go for a walk. Go for a walk, go for a drive. Bila tengok building in the built environment, I try to place myself uh, in the site, in the context that I want. Then selalunya something will come to me lah. Hmm. Okay. So what is a strong design concept? Hmm. Okay. So a strong design concept can be described in a way that it is clear in its ideation, simple in its conception, but it evolved over time. It's simple, but it's strong. For example, uh, example, apa ya? uh, example lah. I, a concept of a rock. Okay, uh, a rock that you can see that the water have made a path, a crack over it again. And that is your concept. And that, uh, although simple, tapi you can see the crevices uh, on the form of the building. You can see the uh, effect of the rock to uh, in the interiors wall. Uh, it is simple, tapi it, it is permanent, uh, it is obvious uh, in how it evolved throughout the building. So itu yang kita nak. Okay, the presence of the concept at all skills on the design, form to the plan, to the facade, to the interior spaces, a single theme that strongly resonates in all aspects of the design. Okay, uh, an artistic inspiration successfully developed into built form and its spaces. And then although art is subjective, so you can see that some people have different opinions of a building kind. However, it's usually a general agreement whether the concept is strong or not. It may be good or, be, or, or bad, but a strength-wise kind art. I don't you ever have an opinion about something, but usually if you think about the uh, previous design students kind, usually when it comes to the strong concepts, the lecturers uh, will agree. There will be a consensus that it is strong. So how kita nak tahu strong tu yang daripada saya cakap tadi lah. So it's clear. So kita boleh nampak the design process tu. And it is successfully integrated, uh, developed into the build form. <coughs> okay. okay. So an architectural concept should provide, the concept should provide an exterior expression and an interior expression. So the exterior expression too is from the form, the facade, the connection to context outside like exterior. And then interior uh, expression is the emotion of the interior spaces, the details, the heights, the movement of people, the framing of the views. So the design concept that you have though, it should permeate into all of this. Into the not just sampai luar exterior form sampai facade je. No, it should go to the exterior and the interior as well. When you have done that, baru kita berkata it's a strong design concept. Okay, a design concept should appeal to the normal layman and the professional specialist. By appeal ni, it means that it should. Uh, encourage uh, conversation like it should strike the interest of both uh, normal people that, that doesn't know that's not in our profession eh? and also the professional specialist if you if your design is successful it should uh, gain interest from both parties lah tu kan nampak daripada image kan orang kartun ni a building is formed and then everyone uh, subjectively have their own opinion when they see it an academician, a businessman, a normal uh, mother ke, nampak, what is the use, what do you have, what is the opinion of your concept? Mungkin the last one is you put, not utopia, <laughs> it's the best uh. <clears throat> Because usually, architect ni, especially principal architect, uh, the one that come up with the, uh, with the building, the design ni, they have a certain ego kan. Uh, sebab tu uh, engineers tend to cluster together, dia boleh buat firm together, kan, very big firm kan. Tapi jadi 
uh, arkitek ni dia nak pecah-pecah dia nak jadi principal uh, because of the ego tu lah uh, they, they, they want to have the power of designing them Okay, elements of concept generation and conception. So, what are the what are the elements of the concept generation? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, is function. Uh, I think you always heard about this kind form of a function, function of a form. Uh, in in Islam, we in uh, the, the the principles is to to use to to do look kind function lah function of a form, practicality. And then materials, uh, the structure, lighting, ventilation, meaning, philosophy. So these are the elements of concept generation. Okay. So you might be asking yourself, oh, why do I need concept? People build building without concept all the time. Okay. That's true, but you need a concept because it gives depth and meaning to your work. <clears throat> uh, especially as a young architecture student that is just learning uh, the, the, the ropes. Right? So it, it, it is very important. Uh, it is very important as not just to have to, to learn what is concept, but also um, what is the role of the concept to to your work. So it gives depth and meaning to your work. It provides a core idea that you carry from the facade to the interior spaces, even to the smallest detail of the building. So it's a unifying principle that carry the building. Okay. So having concept open doors for more related ideas. It makes you think and research. It gives you link that ties you to other architects and designers. So having a Choosing layer, choosing a concept ni, uh, having finally chose one concept ni, it gives you a keyword. Okay, it gives you the key. You open door for more related, related ideas. When you know what is your concept, then you can do research. You can do research. You can do precision study. You can explore more, and from that, um, they can open up you to more to more ideas. Right? And then your research, your your concept will develop. Okay? And ultimately, it leads you to your own design language, your own style. It starts to give a glimpse of your own design principles. The concepts are what distinguish an architect from the everyday architecture. Your design style will be your trademark and makes you unique from other architects. Okay. Okay, developing a design concept. Okay, how do you start then? Okay, you in, in a problem in here. Okay, help me, I'm stuck. Okay, so uh, first you need to be comfortable. Use any, yes, any way you find best to express what you are thinking of. Because architecture ni is a, a facet of art. Okay? So you, you find medium. Your, the medium that you find best to express what you are thinking of. <clears throat> and then it is very important to understand the nature and context that you are working on. For example, the pavilion that we are working on right now, the context <clears throat> is in Nansha Park. Kan? So um, having um, shared the site analysis, the, all the, the knowledge sharing that we did last week, from there you begin to understand the nature and the context that you're working on. So that is very important because that may trigger trigger the concept that you want that you want to come on to, and then you need to brainstorm. Don't be afraid to experiment with many type of media. Just put a uh, kalau tak tahu apa pun. Uh, you just need to put pen to paper and start. So in a way, it is an action. Uh, you need to start something. Kan? You need to put pen to paper, start sketching, ke, uh, reading, sketch and some more. Uh, open books, uh, so uh, pergi jalan-jalan, pergi tengok, uh, sawah padi tadi ke kan, uh, then you, you need to 
uh, do something and empty all your thoughts on paper. Whatever idea you have, just put it on paper. The relevant, the irrelevant, hmm, just sketch. And then read some more. Read, read and read. Go for a walk or a drive. And then you select. Select one or a few, one or a few ideas that you have. And then work more intensively on them. It is good to uh, do this. Lah. You select a few and then uh, develop. Compared daripada you have so many, you tak dapat nak develop kan. In the end tu, dia macam half cook lah. And then, uh, after that, after you have select a few, and then you're working intensively on them, you should select on a concept. One concept, an idea that you feel is the strongest, and you personally feel attracted to. Okay, remember that all strong concepts come from humble beginnings. It should be simple and humble lah. So with time, uh, I think every architect, uh, each one of you pun will find his preferable way of developing a concept. So what I'm explaining here is the general way, uh, usually what, what you do to develop concept. <clears throat> okay, and then is, uh, you need to also to remember that for every problem there is a verse in the Quran, there is a uh, direction. Uh, Petunjuk. So if you are stuck, you have a problem, it's always good to remember to always go back to the Quran. Okay. I think that is uh, quite clear just now. Okay. And then I will show examples of architect and their design the designs. Lah. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, Alva Alto in his public lecture, The Trout and the Mountain Stream. <clears throat> Explains about the way he works. Okay, say baca sikit ya. So when I personally <clears throat> have to solve an architectural problem, I am confronted almost always with an obstacle that is difficult to surmount. The cost, I believe, is the complicated and intense pressure of the fact that architectural design operates with innumerable elements that internally stand in opposition to each other. Okay, so even for Alva Atto, in order to start to his struggles. Lah. So in such cases, I work sometimes totally on instinct in the following manner. For a moment, I forget all the maze of problems. After I have developed a feel for the program and its innumerable demands that have been engraved in my subconscious, I begin to draw in a manner rather like of abstract art. Led only by my instincts, I draw, not architectural synthesis, but sometimes even childish comp compositions. And via this route, I eventually arrive at an abstract basis to the main concept, a kind of universal substance with whose help the, numerable, the numerous quarreling subproblems can be brought into harmony. <clears throat> so you can see, um, even uh, an experienced architect like Alva Atto struggles to start. So because he, he himself feel uh, as an architect, there are so many elements kind that contrast to each other. You need to be an artist, but you need to think like an engineer. You are given a brief by the client that makes you think about cost. And so all those things are in opposition to each other. Then Sometimes you need to go through the brief, go through the context, have the analysis, and then uh, put it aside. You can forget all the problem too, and uh, go by feeling lah, instinct kan. Go for the program too, and start to draw. Your subconscious tu, uh, dah start to pikir all the issue tu, dah baca kan. And then you draw in a manner that is rather like abstract art. Hmm, saya rasa saya pun macam ni juga. Draw, 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 draw lah. Lepas kan. And then sometimes we will draw to we will come to a concept that is personal to you, that is uh, close to your heart. And then uh, a few to young that can develop. Okay. And then via this route, I eventually arrive at an abstract basis. Right? The, a beginning, lah, an idea to the main concept. A kind of universal substance with whose help the numerous problems, sub problems can be brought into harmony. So your concept ni, will bring all those uh, elements that is uh, in opposition to each other too, it will bring it together. It will bring it together uh, from the point of view of the uh, 
people around, living around the site from the client uh, point of view. <clears throat> you are trying to, uh, and a, a concept that is strong enough that can envelop the, the, all, all the aspects then. Okay. Now I will go through uh, with you some of the strong uh, projects that I think that is good for you to know. Lah. Uh, so all these are either modernist or contemporary architects. And if you feel that you like the design, you maybe we can jot down uh, the name of the architect ke, and then later on, uh, you search more on them. So I'm just giving you the starting point. Eh? So uh, first of all is Alba Atu tadi. Alba Atu, uh, Finlandia Hall. Very interesting building lah, that is built into site. Uh, music hall. Hmm. Glen Market. Glen Market. Glen Market. Uh, Australian architect. Uh, this is his sketch of the Australian Islamic Center um, by Glen Market and a lovely plus architects. Very interesting building. Okay, one of the strong features there eh, of the Australian Islamic Center eh, of the pro proposal is the 96 gold painted lanterns which funnel colored light into the space below. Very interesting project. Uh, Community Therapy Center in Bangladesh by Anna Herringer, a German architect that is about humanitarian projects. Guna uh, bamboo, one of the main elements is bamboo. <clears throat> um, recently, recently completed. So, 2020 ni already being put up for many international, uh, international award lah lah um, for this building ni. Hmm. Very interesting kan. So, the exterior form uh, guna all local uh, local material, mud, mud wall, bamboo, uh, biodegradable material lah. And then, dia ada macam tunnel lah tempat sebab ni, this is uh, macam therapy center for special children as well as a community center. So, therapy center, so they have all these nook spaces uh, for student that, uh, special student that want some, uh, be in their own world, you know. Hmm. Okay, Courtyard Kindergarten uh, by Matt Architects. Stop. Usually with kindergarten, you can, uh, with architects that design kindergarten, you, as you can find they will do the very interesting projects that will use rooftop spaces in Japan. Are there a few examples of very good uh, projects kan, that uh, allow us to the, allow the kids to play with the building, very playful building. So this is one example of it. Super minat ya, boleh explore, uh, boleh research more on MAD architects ni, MAD. <clears throat> okay, a local artist, uh, Ascension by, this is the, uh, the punya sculpture ni lah nama dia Ascension by Abdul Mutalib, uh, Mutalib Musa. This is at Sun Surya City, Denkil. Right. A very dynamic movement. Hmm. 60 tons, uh, also by Abdul Mutal Mutalib Musa. Okay, so when, when you research, uh, you should know the keywords that you want to research. So, barulah macam you will find good books, you will find good websites on the material. Uh, macam pavilion ni kan, for example, you, you don't really research pavilion, uh, right? but sometimes to get the interesting idea like this, you need to go into landscape sculpture, landscape art, uh, artworks by artists, uh, and then bila you dah tahu nama tu, and then you explore deeper. Okay? You need to know the keywords lah. Hmm. 60 tons, commissioned by Rimbun Dahan. Uh, he just punya 
Hijaz punya residential for artists kan yang mudahan. For Angela Hijaz, his sixtieth birthday and now part of the permanent collection. Hmm, very dynamic movement. By dynamic here, it means that when you see it, it it's although it is static, tapi nampak macam there's movement uh, in the in the in the structure of the of the sculpture ni kan. Uh, so that's where you call it dynamic. Dynamic movement. The wave, also by Abdul Muttalib Musa, one of his installation. Ah, uh, ni exhibition works, uh, but also by Abdul Muttalib Musa. Okay. Hmm, this is uh, an artwork. Dark namanya Dark Side of Typography by Hundred Kilometer Studio. Hmm. Just want to share with you lah. Some artworks. Uh, ni another artwork. Namun tahu. Tapi the, the name of the artist is Luli Sanchez. Mm. An art, artwork by T.C. Chang. Okay, this is the Swarm Chandelier by Zaha Hadid. Mm. Thousands of black Swarovski crystal hang ni. This is at the entrance hall of the V&A Museum, London. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, pavilion built for the 2014 Malta Design Week by Irina Miodragovic Vela from University of Malta and Steve D. Micoli, uh, an architecture studio. Uh, DFAP studio. You can see how interesting the end shadows can, uh, the shadow of the structure. <clears throat> okay, on to bigger buildings. Uh, one of these uh, that I'm interested in right now is the Dachang Muslim Cultural Center by uh, Architectural Design and Research Institute of SCUT. Uh, very interesting take on a mosque, um, cultural center. Okay. Uh, the Red Roof by Tin Chow, uh, in Tin Chow, uh, Vietnam by Ta Design, TAA Design. Also quite a new project uh, in Vietnam. Vietnam has seen kind of, uh, recently a very good crop of new and upcoming architects. Banyak menang award. Uh, one of them is ni lah. This, uh, this project, the Red Roof ni, is being uh, um, the, being proposed for a, a few awards juga for this year. Hmm. The using of the roof, yeah. Rupa macam uh, Terrace, terrace paddy field. Oh, okay. okay, one of my personal favorite, uh, Nasi Al Mokmos in Shiraz, Iran, by Muhammad Hassan Imimad and Muhammad Reza Kashi. Okay. Use of colored glass and Islamic motif. Lah. Uh, the, the pattern to interesting. See. Okay, uh, project, uh, another project by Abel Sekali. Uh, this is an eco refugee shelter. See how uh, they began developing the skin of the shelter, to eco refugee shelter, ni by making a small model, a sketch model, to see how it can expand and contract. Hmm. Okay. The proposed uh, build, build form. Lah in daytime and nighttime. Okay, uh, good um, contemporary architect, William Alsop. Hmm. The, the project shown here is the Sharp Center for Design, Ontario College of Art in Toronto, Canada, 2004. Okay, it, it began to see how we can integrate the old and the new. Uh, Walaupun dia punya new tu is very strong and ha, juxtaposed kan. Dia ada contrast with 
the contest was very strong, but at the same time, it's still very much uh, respect the old, uh, the old, the, the old building, the old green too, it still maintains it, maintains, maintains that, and still on top of it, develop, uh, proposing his new, his more modern concept. Uh, okay, Tadao Ando, Forest of Two Museum. So Tadao Ando ni is a very good contemporary architect, Japanese architect, uh, one of my favorites. Saya memang peminat Tadao Ando. Uh, from he, uh, his smallest project and to his, to his larger one, macam ni, dia banyak buat museum. So even when he designed a house, a small structure, laneway house, uh, dekat Japan punya laneway tu, um, usually, walaupun dia buat macam pavilion kan, structure ke apa, he's still able to create interior spaces that is very poetic. Water and vegetation and the lighting. Uh, dia akan selalunya bukan, because he says that he grows up in a very modest house. Dia punya upbringingnya susah juga. So rumahnya tu uh, dapat lightingnya sikit-sikit je dalam ni kan depo-depo lighting when he grows up. So dia kata dia appreciate uh, appreciate how kalau kita buat slit slit in the openings ni dia, he he likes to study how it comes through uh, as a uh, depo lighting ah uh, dia, dia suka study the shadow tu. So very interesting ah kita. Uh, green ladder uh, this is an installation by Vo Trongya of Vietnam uh, so architect ni Vo Trongya ni um, very good architect juga saya suka tengok kalau nak tengok uh, precision projects very good project housing dia interesting he, uh, and dia dah banyak develop installation macam ni lah join design week ni kan so this is an installment in SCAF's 2016 architectural exhibition series SEAF in 2016 guna bambu juga ah lepas tu guna all this um, macam ladder lah perspex tu kan ah layer of perspex tu tapi rupa macam floating because the transparency the material shigaruban hmm, outdoor installation bambu roof by shigaruban so you can research more on this if you're interested. Guna metal and bamboo strips. Hmm. This is also a installation outside a museum, a commission, commissioned by a museum for uh, by to, to Shigaruban architect. Ni. So interesting shadowing, interesting movement of the of the installation though. Shigaruban ni, if you read more on him, uh, buat refugee shelters, suka buat shelters, suka explore pavilions. Dia suka guna, there's a book, on, a very good book on him called Paper Architects. But he developed a series of building guna a be, uh, cardboard tubes sebesar tu. And that becomes uh, the, dia punya main structure lah. One of his main material. Okay, um, another good uh, contemporary architect, Massimiliano Fuxas. So this example building that uh, I want to show you is the Dennis uh, Music Hall in France, completed in 2008. Almost see-through transparency at night. See kan, sangat different daytime and nighttime dia. Okay, uh, this is more modernist kot. Uh, bukan contemporary sangat. Modernist, one of the earlier one. But very good architect, Bernard Shumi. So one of his uh, projects that I really like, Park de la Ville, they set out notes, um, notes in the grid pattern. And then they point out red notes ni. And then they, they decide what each note to needs, apa space to needs, and how the pavilion will look like, how they will interact with each other. Uh, so this series, this project ni called Park de la Ville. They in fact ada buku on this project. Uh, very interesting architect. Okay. Zaha Hadid. Hmm. So as an example of Zaha Hadid, uh, 
project dia dia ni a type of what you call architect ni katanya uh, fluid form lah very quite high tech uh, not really high tech in terms of rupa macam machine tu tapi terus material guna ni um, sometimes uh, inspired by nature as well uh, but he uh, she dah 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 pass away lah kan sebenarnya kan a few years quite not not that long ago pass away tapi um, even after uh, she pass away her 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 company her firm lah Zahadi Arkitek ni still continue to produce very good projects um, still continue her style I think bila dia dia ambil associate semua pun they they, they uh, she, she chose orang kan based on her, her style, very strong trademark design. Uh, one of uh, semua yang rupa macam ni lah. So she, she did a lot of cultural center, museum, art hall, uh, orchestra center. So you, you, you go you go to Zaha Hadid for this kind of design, can to get this kind of concept. Okay. Uh, another good one, Hazard and De Miron, Alp Philharmonic in Hamburg. Hmm. Very interesting contrast between the solid bawah tu dan atas. Hmm. BIG, Jacques Ingel Group, one of uh, their earlier works from Maritime Youth Center. So, Uh, you can see that uh, BIG ni sebenarnya antara yang uh, contemporary architect yang banyak guna diagram. Uh, if you explore their website, you have you can see very interesting uh, design development type of drawing lah. Uh, dia macam banyak guna macam ni. Uh, this type of example of uh, diagramming folded uh, and then later on you start to guna macam pixel. Uh, the Lego blocks, uh, apartments, uh, in, uh, intricate spaces in between intersecting cubes ni selalunya dia akan uh, develop one module design and then uh, pop, 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 ni macam itulah. Itu that's BIG. Uh, another name that you should know, Dominic Perot. Uh, so this example is uh, Iuha Woman University. Instead of going up, uh, this building ni uh, excavate down, go down. So, jadi macam toro fair. So, this is one of his key view lah dalam projek ni. Tadi kalau fikir pasal universiti, saya teringat projek ni. Dominic Perot, you have woman university. Sebab so, it provide access hmm, through the site and then allowing a lot of sunlight going into the building. Renzo Piano, uh, one of uh, Renzo ni pun uh, have uh, already completed a lot of projects. Uh, Renzo one of it is this uh, Center Cultural in Gibao, uh, New Caledonia, Caledonia, 1998. Quite an inspiring design project lah, completed cultural center. Okay, I think that's uh, about the end of the lecture. Okay. Hmm. Mana ya? Okay. Okay, just not share. Just to share with you, kadang you you are wondering kan sebab um, all these uh, architects are very have gotten there. Uh, maksudnya awak sekarang ni dekat point A, they are already at point B, sampai ke Z kan. Right? They very very established lah ada cara. And then maybe some of you might be thinking, okay, uh, I'm, I'm only starting. Uh, macam mana nak start kan? 
So I think uh, I, I want to share you my, my journey lah. Sebab so, saya tak tahu personally uh, journey mereka. So even saya dengan lecturer lain pun mungkin lecturer lain lebih hebat. Tetapi uh, at least I can share. I can share you lah. Uh, so maybe something that you can keep in mind uh, and learn kan. Um, I think it's around your age. Uh, around your age. Mesti in second year macam tu. I start to explore what is my design language. Uh, saya nak tahu saya punya design language apa. At that time in my university, um, kayaknya we are able to choose design studio. Kita boleh pilih lecturer. Setiap, kiranya lecturer uh, design studio are not big. Macam you guys said now. Small, kecil-kecil je. Macam tutorial group je tu. Sepuluh uh, orang. So each lecturer ni uh, come up with their own design studio. Selalu mereka mengenai dengan what they like lah. So you choose tau. You choose. So uh, around in my second year ni. Uh, uh, apa tu nak cakap ya? The, the, the project is on urban uh, urban just happen lah tahu kenapa kan tahu saya saya ni pilih sebab minat ke tapi the project that i choose that, 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 that ada opportunity nak buat uh, nak buat projek tu uh, banyak guna landway projects uh, very small projects installation um landway lah very urban very urban uh, that explore the the interst interstitial spaces Uh, the in between spaces dalam urban urban landscape ni so i uh, I, i i i i found that i like landways back lanes rooftop uh, space macam tu and then bila in the project ni uh, salah satu the architect that i want, i that i look at is benak shumi ni lain daripada saya pun dia bukan landway pun kan tapi the idea of the red dots the notes tu that i like Uh, lepas tu bila saya baca, saya like tu saya pergi cari buku lah. I explore, uh, saya pergi online, cari library mana masa tu uh, my university atau MIT masa tu tak ada, tak ada sama, banyak sama buku. So terpaksa naik bus, naik train, pergi cari library orang lain, pergi memohon pinjam buku mereka. Pinjam buku mereka, lepas tu apa yang ada online tu saya baca habis lah. That is not Uh, I was not told to do that by my lecturer. Tapi saya sendiri yang nak sebab saya nak tahu. Uh, and then kadang-kadang tu bila buat kerja-kerja banyak, I set my master start lah. Okay, minggu ni nak buat this certain diagram sebab saya nak explore. Okay, kita buat-buat-buat. Lepas tu kadang-kadang tu kena bash down dengan lecturer. Macam, okay lah, tak apa. But it's okay sebab usually I find that uh, even though that work tu not accepted ke, kena go back to zero ke, but I learn something. Uh, so kita dah ada a series of bank tau, bank of uh, uh, language tau, keywords yang kita dah tahu dalam otak kita. But you need to go through the process first. So uh, I found that I like Benak Shumi ni, I try to integrate his principles. I see how he 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 do this principles lah. And then um, you, I look at I look at Benak Shumi untuk the scale of large scale tau, macam zoom out on the urban plan. And then um, on a on a more medium scale tu saya tengok saya suka tak ada ando. So every level tu ada ada different architects that I look at. Huh. So but you are, you found that sebenarnya benak cumi dengan tak ada ando ni pun dia ada similarities ya. When you read, can you like? Nah, kadang tu ada ando tu I like his use of concrete, how he deals with uh, small spaces. So it becomes interesting. So semua tu put into design. Itu for, uh, for example, masa saya second year tu adalah design project saya yang explore lang, uh, rooftop uh, in back lane, landway project ni uh, in, in near Chinatown. And then the 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 language that I use, selalunya apa benda yang saya baca tau, uh, I, I read. And then it in uh, being developed by the site. Uh, by the side yang of the project that I'm doing at that, at that time lah. Uh, so saya baca, um, so bila side tu kan banyak rooftop kan, daripada landway tu tak boleh nak kacau sangat pedestrian uh, uh, pile and then go up 
Uh, then you have all these different type of interesting nooks and crannies and rooftop spaces. And then how it developed from there. Uh, and then the, I start to develop a design language. Hmm. A, a building that contracts and expand based on the site. Uh, that it allow movement. Uh, so the material that I want, say that start explore a few precedents. Uh, for details kan, so Glenn Mercat tu saya suka, so saya guna material dia, uh, transparency. Hmm. So that uh, language tu is starting to become my own. Lepas tu, because uh, saya peminat uh, Hijaz, and then later on tu saya sempat uh, intern kerja dengan Hijaz, uh, buat dapat banyaklah housing, so it, macam kerja dengan Hijaz kan. Tapi I found that bila kerja dengan Hijaz tu, I don't really like their scale. Uh, so uh, dia punya large scale iconic tower-tower ni macam macam tak masuk jiwa sangat lah. So bila habis uh, major project pun uh, bila dah kerja, I look for medium to small scale uh, firms yang buat housing, yang buat small housing ni. Okay, and that develop me more. Sebab so, saya dah tahu kan from here yang my I, what I like is that they constructed tau. Uh, to pecah-pecahkan to spaces ni uh, and then how to connect them again uh, but, uh, but after after that tu uh, kerja dengan firm yang buat small housing ni you are able to explore lah so, saya kerja dengan GDP uh, GDP pula dah saya kerja dengan GSD GSD architect a small scale architect architect firm uh, so able to design able to design a uh, housing so uh, lagi interesting in that in that terms. Lepas tu, afterwards tu, bila uh, masuk into academic, buat PhD pun, uh, I found that I was able to use the same principles nak explore my thesis. Kan, saya buat uh, Islamic uh, housing, visual privacy, and then I found that I was able to um, break uh, uh, break the house into different elements. The door, the window, the openings, boleh pecah-pecah kan. I think I appreciate the idea of breaking down things uh, and able to analyzing each one of them, macam classify kan, uh, collect data tu semua macam very interesting to me lah. But um, it is a, a, the, the, the backbone of it too adalah you need to do a lot of hard work a lot of rigor, something that your lecturer don't need to tell you pun, but each week too, you have your own benchmark now. It's mark that uh, the things that you want to do. Uh, you need to explore A, B, C, D, baru you ada all those data, all the drawings, all those catalog, lepas tu you boleh bring, uh, develop your concept. Hmm. Some things that um, I hope uh, each one of you start to have this uh, high aspiration of where you want to be. Because each one of you, I feel, are the potential, have that potential of uh, being better than I am, being better than uh, all the lecturers at Usim Sekarani. You have a very high potential right now, but you need to start. Uh, most often, I find that, um, okay. Most often, I find that not really the talented one yang akan survive. Ah, selalunya it is the hardworking ones, hardworking ones that will make it, make it to the end. Okay, I think that's uh, that's the end of my lecture lah. So, we have any question? Ida nak tanya. Hmm. Kan Madam cakap tadi macam Madam minat yang urban design kan? Hmm. So kiranya nanti kalau kita dah kerja, memang kita akan kena pilih ke kita nak bahagian mana? Macam kalau kita ambil architecture pun, kita akan kena specify ke? Ambil urban ke, landscape ke, ID ke macam mana? Hmm. Not really usually. Tapi um, selalunya bila you work, you tengok portfolio the company tu. Portfolio company tu, they, they may have a certain design style. So, but usually the head to the principal to uh, his design style will carry through uh, to the projects, kan? Uh, so, uh, bila 
you 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 apply for a firm uh, you work his projects meaning that in in a way awak dah choosing a path lah if you choose a landscape uh, design company you will learn something else tapi kalau you uh, macam uh, hijaz gdp yang big ones tu you akan explore uh, different something else tapi uh, most uh, selalunya dia 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 akan ada range juga lah Ha, they akan ada range different types of uh, projects that you are able to explore. Cuma ada tendency, uh, ada certain style yang akan go go uh, akan buat lebih lah. Kalau hmm. dekat hijaz kasturi yang madam explore tu macam mana? Hmm, hijaz tu dia macam more on tower tau. Big buildings, uh, skyscraper, landmark. Uh, dia punya key terms tu adalah mercu tanda lah. Uh, mereka membuat mercu tanda kan. So people go to them for those kind of buildings. Tapi the interesting part mas masa saya masuk tu uh, dia tengah buat submission untuk uh, pemesaran masjid di haram. Uh, masa tu saya dapat was able to join that project. So that's interesting lah. Uh, lepas tu dapat explore sustainability aspect in a way adalah juga dia punya range tapi dia punya skill tu is like that uh, kan compact ke bila saya masuk GSD tu is very different uh, very different macam they do housing on many scale of housing so kita dah tahu masuk tu saya masuk tu saya dah tahu lah um, what uh, this uh, type uh, different macam dia ada size of firm kan uh, saya tak nak yang macam level macam hijaz tu saya nak smaller so that I can able to do it, lepas tu saya nak housing. Uh, so in a way, saya sendiri dah memilih saya punya path lah. Kan? Hmm. Okay. Ada apa-apa soalan lagi? Bangka aja, menjawab soalan tak? <laughs> tak sebab soalan semalam, saya macam <laughs> terfikir. Sambil-sambil uh -huh. terfikir ni tak saya macam kait kalau tahun satu uh, hmm. kita orang belajar macam banyak dengan nature kan oh, right. memang semua material semua belajar still lagi yang nature so saya pun tak expose lagi dengan steel um, hmm. dan lain lah so saya macam uh, perlu ke aku pilih pas sekarang <laughs> macam tengah terfikir lah oh. Lepas, hmm. kan kalau dia yeah, um, yeah, if you don't know your options macam hmm. you have to learn everything first in order for you to know which you like for, you like in the end mm. kan uh, so mm. it's not a matter of choosing now it's just mm. going through the whole process macam uh, madam azani cakap tadi and then eventually it'll stick to your heart which actually mm. you like ah uh, betul mm. insyaallah thank you thank you madam okay apa lagi soalan Hmm. Madam, yeah. tadi ada yang satu building tu hmm? Yang dia macam petak pas bawah dia tu Tiba-tiba yang tinggi pas bangunan tepi dia lain tu ha. Saya ingat nama dia tadi Yang okay, itu sekejap. Madam cakap dia macam respect uh, dengan old building kan uh -huh. Tapi dia punya bentuk sendiri pun macam dah lain kan Mana yang dia punya respect tu Madam Saya tak uh. tahu Respect tu in terms of dia maintain the urban grain Existing urban grain tu dia tak demolish hmm. dia tak demolish but i think the the concept of the building to is to show contrast contrast between the old and the new so the the dia punya contrast tu in very striking difference lah so mm -hmm. so there is a component of respect ha hmm. respect itu sebab dia because they can simply sebenarnya demolish just the, just demolish the old one and build kan on top of the site mm -hmm. empty site ha uh, but they decide not to do that So the decision tu is very uh, strong lah. So kita boleh cuba nampak that is a level of respect there. Hmm. Masa saya masa saya kerja dulu kan, the one time tu we all pergi site, ha pergi site lah. Lepas tu masa tu kerja dengan Hijaz kot, dia pun dia nak buat dia nak develop uh, satu bangun uh, big high rise uh, apartment condo lah dekat Kampung Baru punya site. So to do that dia pun dia akan uh, under NASA kot NASA TTI so they the, the, the they are going to demolish big chunk of kampung baru untuk bring up the uh, untuk bangun kan 
untuk bangunkan uh, projek tu. Lepas tu dia dah tahu orang-orang kampung baru ni semua dah mengamuk. Dan semua akan dah ada start dah retaliate. Lepas tu kita kita tu kata uh, saya kata dia saya suka menyebok kan. Saya kata nak, nak ikut juga pergi site. Dan dia kata okeylah bawa pergilah bawa Azhani. Tu <laughs> dia bawa Azhani ni. Lepas tu tiba-tiba sampai site tu turun kereta je dia all semua yang kita kita semua cabut tai. Cabut tai lepas tu semua throw ke saya drawing. Kata tak apa Azhani, orang kampung tak akan hurt orang oh, dalam puan. Itulah. <laughs> <Dia, dia, dia. laughs> <laughs> macam apa tadi you okay yang lain tu semua macam menyamar macam orang lemen lah <laughs> macam buat tai semua lah oh. <laughs> oh, ya Allah lepas tu punya orang kampung semua dah macam against the project lepas tu bila oh. saya jalan-jalan dekat site tu pun so saya pun dah start tanya lah dia punya PCP arkitek dari saat kita tu kan dia kata eh, if I were them uh, oh. I would also be feeling the same thing saya pun akan uh, I will also be against them. Mana tanya kan, such a, a beautiful kampung uh, kampung area dapat a view nampak ke LCC uh, macam key key area lah. Tapi yang yang dia nak demolish ni katanya semua tanah-tanah yang tak ada black and white uh, tak ada macam gerain tu kenanya dia pass down ke tu, tu dia, dia akan ambil big chunk of tanah tu. Uh. Lepas tu, the, the, the lecturer, the lecturer pula dah, uh, my, my boss masa tu kata, um, dia kata, tapi Azani, you need to sacrifice a little untuk orang lain, untuk ramai dapat enjoy. Dia bagi perumpamaan tu as if um, macam you buat highway. So, you kena demolish a part of the hill, you kena cut through the hill tu so that... Um, Juta-juta orang boleh guna highway untuk ha, sampai ke destination mereka lah. Ha, dia kata, um, some orang kampung macam lose their land, tapi lepas tu bila you build for for him, no? you build high rise tu, ramai orang dapat uh, enjoy the the site and dapat tengok ke LCC juga. <laughs> macam tu lah. Tapi for me, at, at that point tu, uh, macam key point tau, saya dah terasa macam Kenapa aku ni lebih macam nak backing orang kampung ni? Sebenarnya, uh, tapi I'm I'm on the side of the architect. Uh, tapi lepas tu, ya, kita ada pun nak pandang saya semacam. Macam kata budak ni, dia punya perspektif lain ni kot. Uh, I think that, that that is those key points yang saya dah, dah, dah terasa tau. Walaupun he just tu my dream kan. Uh, tapi masa tu dah terasa dah. Mungkin uh, not really in tune dengan jiwa uh, point of baca lah tu <laughs> <laughs> dah terasa kan macam lain uh, hmm. tapi sebenarnya uh, it is is a good firm uh, tak, kita dia apa-apa kita buat lah kita ambil yang baik dan yang yang kita rasa tak okey kita kita hmm. put aside kan uh, apa-apa hmm. kita buat insyaallah hmm. okey ada ini persoalan harap-harap menjawablah kan saya menggelel je lebih. <laughs> Madam Rashid, uh, Madam ah uh, Sheila ada apa pun nak share on concept. Concept. Ah. Concept. Uh-huh. I uh, just nak share yang not so much on concept sebab I rasa you dah cover alhamdulillah very good explanation on concept. Just uh, on my part I think uh, for the competition hari tu kan uh, Kawa ada buat um, his review on the three projects kan hmm. and just uh, share to everybody I'm not sure who joined uh, ramai ke yang join hari tu join group tiga dengan tujuh ada join yang lain saya tak sure no right okay tak apa just nak share apa yang ada hari okay. tu so Kawa cakap uh, the, I think the most important thing that maybe we have not looked at on on like on what he explained the other day of how he came to what he proposed for the competitions uh, the three projects are actually competition entries which some of them he won and some of them uh, that dapat honorary mentions lah so um and he was um bidding with like the big boys in the in the industry Um, you had the Gamuda, the big construction companies lah. So uh, it was a good experience according to him. And every time he he did something, he always started with issue. So I think for you guys, maybe you can note this down. 
So um, example eh, dia bagi tahu like he started with uh, pollution. Okay. So it's a global issue kan, pollution, uh, global warming kan. And the use of excessive plastic usage. So they start macam tu. They start macam tu and then he showed images of like how it's in the water, how it's in our drink, how it's actually inside our body already. So, and then he came to the point where, okay, I'm going to use this plastic to become a material for my proposal, for my building. Okay. So it's interesting how the issue to yang sangat strong. And then he said that is probably where or how he kind of like opened people's mind lah. Mm. Okay, um, on how uh, design can actually work, uh, solving a, a, a not just an idea but a real, uh, real issue, real current issue that is happening in the world. Can okay. mm. so, um, and then he he used uh, modular frames. He used all these um, current terminologies, can which can relate to everybody uh, in the current moment easy to assemble, lightweight, not permanent. Um, so it can be, um, apa ni? It's, it's modular, so it's it's one type of like ni, and then it can grow according to the need. Mm. And then he understands also the community. He understands who is uh, the contacts lah. Eh? Siapa uses the, what are the needs for those users. Okay? And then in order to understand eventually what he needs in his design. So he started again, I, I repeat, he started again from the issue and then the other contacts, the past two, his design uh, strategies, which relates back to the concept and everything. And then comes his proposal, which is a solid one. He says, keep it simple, um, but understandable, clear, and have a stand where you are and, and what you actually want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So inshallah, uh, I hope I, you understand what I, I need and then yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, what else oh I also asked him like what type of um, what type of um, applications do his, he use uh, in terms of graphic can so but it's a competition it needs to stand out it needs to stand out from the rest can so uh, he said nothing like out of the ordinary, he just uses the normal um, applications, uh, of course, AutoCAD, SketchUp, Vectorworks, um, Photoshop, SketchUp, uh, just the normal mm. things. Uh, so it's not actually, um, it's the idea, okay? Mm. And a bit of exploration on application. And oh, he said a lot of Photoshop. So mm -hmm. that is where you edit. So whatever you're good at, just drill on that. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and what else? Looking, looking at nature, looking at um, how the world works now and hopefully in the future. So it's not just designing for now, it's designing for the future, inshallah. And uh, respecting nature, which is in line dengan Islamic values, kan? Hmm. Uh, relationship between man and man, kan? Kita punya hmm. community jadi kuat, kan? Uh, penyatuan ummah, kan? Dengan man and nature, kita understand apa yang, uh, how the nature is right now, apa kemusnahan yang kita telah buat dekat muka bumi ni, kan? Apa yang manusia sendiri dah buat, macam mana kita nak um, help out as an architect, as a human being, macam mana kita nak do our role, uh, nak help out kan, insyaAllah. Macam itulah. Hmm. And uh, so there's man and man, man and nature. Satu lagi apa ya, saya lupa. Allah, man and, uh, man and creator. Okay. Man hmm. and creator. So secara tak langsung, bila kita dah ada kesedaran tentang apa yang kita buat, insyaAllah dia akan mendekatkan lagi kita dengan Allah. Dengan understanding of uh, the Quran, the sunnah, the practice kan, the practice of uh, uh, Rasul, uh, insyaAllah kita akan lebih dekat dengan Allah secara tak langsung insyaAllah. Okay, so um, any questions that uh, maybe uh, nak tanya, boleh hmm. ni lah. I think very good sharing by uh, Madam Rahila because I uh, Sebenarnya to start with issue too is a very good point that you can use the, the, the pavilion too as a 
as a tool to convey a message. Uh, I noticed yeah. that and with, with architects, ni, even uh, even in their smallest installation, in your structure, too, they are trying to convey a message, uh, something that they have uh, personally hold dear with your heart. So you, you use that uh, as a tool. Uh, and also another good point by Madam Rashida is that to use the the tools that you are most comfortable with. Uh, AutoCAD and Photoshop, you can belajar to edit with Photoshop, kan? A combination of by hand, physical models, kali dengan 3D model, kalau nak start explore, so it's very good. And also sketches. Sketches is where hmm. all the ideas actually um, from your brain, it gets delivered on paper. That is where that design uh, process hmm. starts from, kan? So, itu pun penting, sangat-sangat penting. So, if you have an idea like uh, Madam Adasani had mentioned just now, uh, sketch, sketch, everything sketch. Keep a logbook, keep a sketchbook always with you. Ada je idea, just jot it down. Uh, ada je nama arkitek yang macam, eh menarik pula dia punya design eh. Lepas tu macam tulis nama dia. Lepas tu go online, Google. Uh, go hmm. to the library, go to uh, find out information. Without reading, you won't go... You need to read, read a lot and understand, mm -hmm. comprehend. Yeah. Kan apa ni, ikhra kan? Kata baca, read. And then dia cakap sekali lagi, read. Read lagi kan? So dalam term tu, dia bukannya baca tu, baca tiga kali, bukan? Baca tu actually baca first time, mungkin kita tak ni kan? Second time tu baca is comprehending. Uh, that's what read, that second read means, comprehension. And then the third read, dia cakap, Read kan lagi kan? Allah. Uh, that is actually action. Reading and comprehension and doing uh, for the greater good. Uh, something like that. InsyaAllah mm. ya. Yeah? Mm. Okay, that's all from my lecture input. Saya rasa saya stop the recording now lah. Kasi <laughs> ada.